Okay, today we're going to start sentences. Everyone knows what sentences are. We have them in English. And we have true sentences. If you follow baseball and the Pirates in particular, if I say that Johnny Ray plays for the Pirates, this is a true sentence. If I say that Rick Roden plays for the Pirates, if you follow baseball, you know that this is now a false sentence. Likewise, in math, we have sentences. We have true sentences. Two times three is six. This is a true sentence. We have false sentence. Three plus two times six is 30. This is a false sentence. So we have true sentences, we have false sentences in math. Let's go back to English. Again, baseball. Let's suppose I say, he plays for the Pirates. He plays for the Pirates. Is that a true sentence or a false sentence? When? We don't know. It depends upon who he is. He is our variable. The truthness or falseness of that sentence depends upon who we sign he to. Now, this is called an open sentence. Likewise, in math, we have open sentences. 3x equal 12. That says 3 times some number is 12. Now, the truthness or falseness of this sentence depends upon the value of x. If I tell you x is 10, this is a false sentence. If I tell you x is 1, this is a false sentence. In fact, the only value that of x that will make this true is 4. Now, the value of our variable that makes the sentence true is called the solution set. And that's what we're going to be after. We're going to be after the solution set. The value of x, the value of our variable that makes the sentence true. Okay, now you all told me that x was equal to 4. Question is, how do you get it? Yeah, you have to remember. Most students say, hey, we divided 12 by 3. Well, if we divide 12 by 3, we get 3x equal 4. What we did is we divided both sides by 3. Because we want to know what 1x is equal to, x. So we divided both sides by 3, and we got x is equal to 4. Now, you can think of an equation, and that's what we're working with now, equation, as a seesaw that's in balance. You're allowed to do anything you want to one side. As long as you do the same thing to the other side, it retains its balance. Okay? Now, let's expand on this a little. Let's suppose we have the equation uh, 5x plus 7 is equal to 42. 5x plus 7. This is 5 times some number increased by 7 is 42. I like to know, how do we find the solution set? What is the first thing we're going to do in this problem? The very first thing you want to do. Tony? Subtract 7 from both okay. sides. Okay. Tony says subtract 7 from both sides. That's right. I don't like the word subtract. So what I'm going to do is add a negative 7 to both. Same thing. Same thing. If I do that, I come out with a brand new equivalent equation. We have 5x equal 35. We now divide both sides by the coefficient of our variable, and we come out with x is equal to 7. There's the solution set. Let's take it a step further. Let's suppose I have 
6x minus 11 is equal to 16 plus 3x. Let's see if we can find the solution set for that problem. Okay, Bibi, Bibi, talk to us. What's the first thing you did? What's the first thing you want to do? Get the constants to one side. Uh, uh, she says, get the constants to one side? Okay, how'd you do that? Um, the of Half the opposite of negative 11? Add positive 11 to both sides? Okay. So if I do that, I get 6x on the left. On the right, I get 27 plus 3x. So I did what she told me to do. Now what do you want to do? Add a 3x. Okay, how are you going to do it? Add the opposite of 3x. Add the opposite of 3x to both sides. Add a negative 3x to both sides. Okay, I can do that. I get 3x equal... 27. Divide, Divide both sides by 3. And you came out with x equal 9. Everybody get, I don't believe that's the right answer. I don't believe it. Convince me, Beeb. How would you... Yeah, go back to the original equation. She said, every place I have an x, put in 9. And it better make this sentence true. Well, let's see. 6 times 9 is 54, minus 11 is 43. So the left-hand side of that equation came out to be 43. The right side better come out to be 43. Well, let's see what we have. We have 16 plus 3 times 9, well, that's 27. 16 plus 27, hey. That checks, okay? Nice and simple. Well, let's make them just build them up a little bit more. Let's suppose we have this. Five times the quantity, 3x minus 2, minus four times the quantity, x minus 7, is equal to two times the quantity, 4x minus 5, plus... 
this come out nice? No. No. Like yeah, yeah. That didn't come out nice. Where it came out nice if that first one was a 3X plus 2. That's okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. What's the first step in this particular problem? What's the first thing you're going to do? Remove. Remove parentheses, okay? If I do, I get 15x minus 10 minus 4x plus 28 equal 8x minus 10 plus 29. Parentheses are removed, both sides. No parentheses. What's our next step? What are we going to do next? Right, combine like terms over on each side of the equation. So if I do that, I have 11x plus, um, is that right? Yeah. 18 equal 8x plus 19. Okay, next step. We want to get all the terms with x on one side. So I'm going to add a negative 8x to both sides. If I do, I come out with 3x plus 18 equal 19. Notice we have all the terms with our variable on one side. We want all the terms that don't contain that variable off that side. So we want the 18. We don't want it there. We had a negative 18 to both sides. We get 3x equal 1. We now divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable, which is 3. We come out with x equal 1 third. Okay? Yeah, okay. Let's try this one. Quantity 4x minus 7 times the quantity x minus 5 plus the quantity 3 minus 2x times the quantity 1 plus 2x is equal to negative 8. I'll repeat them. That's the quantity 4x minus 7 times the quantity x minus 5 plus the quantity 3 minus 2x times the quantity 1 plus 2x equal negative 8. They better.
Yeah. 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 Especially in equations, they want to bring it all on one side and they forget to just combine them. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. This one come out pretty nice? Real nice. Real nice? Okay. Let's see what real nice is. Our first step is to clear these parentheses. Well, we have here a little FOIL multiplication. Again, we have 4x squared. We have a negative 27x, positive 35. Plus, if we multiply these out, we have 3 plus 4x minus 4x squared equals negative 8. Notice what we have in this problem. We have x squares. They better disappear. We better lose it because we don't know how to play with x squares until next week. Next week we get x squares. So if we combine like terms, sure enough, the 4x squares disappear. We have a negative 27 and a positive 4 it gives us a negative 23x. We have a positive 38 equal negative 8. We've combined like terms. We want to get all the variables. Well, we have all the x's on one side. We want all the terms that don't have x off that side. I have to add a negative 20, 38 to both sides. And I get negative 23x equal negative 46. We now divide both sides by negative 23, and we come out with x is equal to 2. OK? Well, let's see. Let's try now. A little different. Here we go. We have 7x plus 3 over 6 minus 3x plus 1 over 2 equal x minus 2 over 3. Well, I don't know. You're going to tell me how to do this, Tim, and then I'll tell you. <laughs>
Okay, this one come out nice. We get an answer. Nice answer. No. Ten over four? I didn't get ten over four. Two? Three? I don't know, for some reason I got one. But I might be wrong. Let's find out. Now, what I like to point out to you, I tried to do it when we were in fractions before. Anytime you have more than one term in numerator and denominator, enclose it in parentheses for a safety factor. Okay? Now, notice what we have in this problem. We have fractions. We have fractions. But this is an equation. We have tons and tons of freedom. We're allowed to do anything we want to one side. As long as we do the same thing to the other side, it's okay. So our first step, and we're going to give you the format to solve any first degree equation right now. The first step is to clear fractions, get rid of fractions. In order to get rid of fractions, we find the LCM, the lowest common multiplier. It's the same number as the LCD, but the lowest common denominator means you're going to put everything over it. The lowest common multiplier means you're going to multiply everything by it. What would have been the LCD for this problem? Six. six. Therefore, the LCM is six. And we're going to multiply each one of these terms by six. <coughs> Each one. Well, let's see what happens. We have six in the six is one. We get one times the quantity, seven x plus three. Two in the six is three. We get negative three times the quantity, three x plus one. Equal. Three in the six is two. We get two times the quantity, x minus two. Notice, first step clear fractions. What we have here is now an equivalent equation, no fractions. Second step, clear parentheses if you have them. We have parentheses. So I clear them. And if you didn't use parentheses, right here is where you made your mistake. You add a plus 3 instead of a negative 3. Second step, remove parentheses. Third step, combine like terms on each side of the equation. Well, let's see, we have 7x, negative 9x is a negative 2x. A positive 3 and a negative 3, they cancel, and we get 2x minus 4. Third step, combine like terms on each side of the equation. Step 4, Get all the terms with the variable on one side. Well, our variable is x, so we want to get all the terms with x on one side. Now remember, it doesn't make a bit of difference as far as the answer is concerned which side you bring the x's on. Doesn't make a bit of difference answer-wise. But sometimes, problem-wise, it's a little easier to bring them on one side rather than the other. So here I'm going to add a negative 2x to both sides. If I do, I get negative 4x is equal to negative 4. Step 4, get all the terms with the variable on one side. Step 5, get every term that doesn't have that variable off that side. Well, if you take a look, the only thing over here on the left are x's, so we don't have to worry about step 5 in this problem. But step 5 says get every term that does not contain an x off that side. Step six, divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable. Now by the coefficient we mean what are you multiplying that variable by? Well here the coefficient of x is negative four. We're going to divide both sides by negative four. We come out with x equal one. Step six, divide both sides. Step seven, check. How do you check? You take this answer, plug it back in. Okay? And there's the answer. I was right. One was the correct answer. 
Now this next one, I have no idea how it comes up, but we'll find out. Here we go, seven over x squared minus three x plus two plus five over x squared plus x minus two equal 10 over x squared minus four. I'll repeat that, that's seven over x squared minus three x plus two plus five over x squared plus x minus two equal 10 over x squared minus four. Okay. 